on this week's episode of the Rambler Sports Locker. Men's soccer finished their season and RSL reporter Mackenzie Brenning ranks her top five Loyola Winter athletes. Also, the women's soccer team suffered a loss in the NCAA tournament and RSL reporter Amelia Eagles looked into the rebuild of the women's basketball team. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Ioana Kekatos. And I'm Michael Faso. On Friday, November 9th, the women's soccer team competed against Florida State in the NCAA tournament. The Ramblers competed against the Florida State Seminoles in the first round matchup of the 2018 NCAA Women's Soccer Championship. Seniors Taylor Limburis and Jenna Sesney had the only two goal shots on goal for the Ramblers, while junior Kate Moran racked up a career-high eight saves. An early goal in the second half for the Florida State put them up one to nothing against Loyola, and the Ramblers were unable to come back from the goal and were defeated by the Seminoles one to zero. Loyola wrapped up their season with a record of 11-7-1 and 6-1-0 and and in the Missouri Valley Conference play. Senior Madison Kimball was named a Google Cloud Academic All-District Selection by the College Sports Information Directors of America. This is the first time since the 2008 season that the program has had an honoree. On November 9th, men's soccer competed in the MVC Conference semifinals against Drake University. Despite a lot of back and forth action for the two teams, the score remained tied at zero at the end of regulation at, at the end of the first overtime. Just as the match appeared to be heading toward penalty kicks, junior Aiden Magali picked up his fourth goal of the year to set a single season career high and more importantly send his team to the championship on Sunday afternoon while in double overtime. In a play that began with a feed from senior Alec Lasinski, Magali knocked it home to keep Loyola's season going. On November 11th, men's soccer fought, fought a hard match against Central Arkansas. Magali again notched the only Rambler goal of the game on a penalty kick in the 80th minute that cut the Bears' lead in half. However, the goal would not prove to be enough as Central Arkansas escaped with a 2-1 victory and ended the Rambler season. Magali senior Tucker Stevenson and redshirt senior Grant Stoneman represented Loyola on the all-tournament team. Stevenson led the Ramblers with three shots, marking the sixth time this year he's compiled three or more in a single match. The Ramblers ended their season 10-7-2 and 3-1-2 and and in MVC play. With the conclusion of both teams' soccer seasons comes the kickoff of the winter sports seasons. RSL reporter Mackenzie Brenning takes us through the five winter athletes to look out for this season in this week's Top 5. Thanks, Ioana. This week on Top 5, I'll be naming the top five key athletes as we head into our winter season. Starting off at number five is sophomore Ellie Rice of the women's basketball team. Last year, in her freshman season, Rice started in seven of her 26 appearances. She proved to be an impressive player by averaging 7.4 points, 3.7 rebounds, and 35.4% clip from behind the three-point arc. Next up at number four is junior Quinn Speaker of the women's volleyball team. As women's volleyball steers toward the end of their season, Speaker has averaged 301 kills, 29 serves, and 255 digs. She also holds the highest amount of points this season with 342. At number three is sophomore Cameron Kretwick of the men's basketball team. The 6'9 center from Algonquin, Illinois played an important role in the basketball team's exciting Final Four run this past March. Kretwick put up 11 points in the MVC championship against Illinois State, ensuring Lewis place in the NCAA tournament. Kretwick had 11 points against Tennessee in the second round, 9 points against Kansas State in the Elite Eight, and finally 17 points against Michigan in the Final Four. So far, this season, Kretwick has averaged 9.5 points per game and 6.5 rebounds. Number two is redshirt senior Lindsey Bruis for the indoor track team. This year, in her cross-country season, Bruis defended her MVC cross-country championship title, was named to the MVC cross-country athlete Female Athlete of the Week and even won a bid to the NCAA Cross Country Championships. Bruce will look to continue her dominance in the indoor track and field season just as she did last year by earning a runner-up in a 3,000 meter run at the MVC Indoor Championships. And finally, coming in at number one is redshirt senior Clayton Custer for the men's basketball team. The 6-1 guard was the key instrument in Loyola's Final Four run. Custer scored 14 points in the first round against Miami, sent the team to the Sweet 16 with a game-winning shot against Tennessee, 
recorded 15 points against Nevada and also 15 in the semifinals against Michigan. Going into the 2018-19 season, Custer was named an honorable mention to the All-American team and have, has averaged 14 points and one rebound in Loyola's first two games. That's all for this week's Top 5. I'm Mackenzie Brenning and back to you at the desk. Thanks, Mackenzie. The men's basketball team competed against Furman University on Friday, November 9th. Loyola struggled in the first half, falling behind the Paladins 23-8. Redshirt senior Clayton Custard led the Rambos to a comeback in the first half by scoring 16 points. Despite it being a close second half, Furman claimed the game with a dunk in the last second to make the score 60-58. Cluster led the team with 19 points, while sophomore Lucas Williamson recorded his first career double with double 12 points and 11 rebounds. He also had two blocks and a pair of steals in the game. The Ramblers were back in action on Wednesday, November 15th, and RSL reporter Amelia Ickles has the recap of the game. We're here live at the scene of Genteel Arena, where the Loyola Ramblers just faced off against the Niagara University okay, Purple Eagles. The Purple Eagles struck first, scoring twice within the first minute of the game. However, the Ramblers answered back with a hero block and Clayton Custer scoring quickly after. The first half of the game was back and forth, with the Ramblers giving up and taking the lead repeatedly. They finished the first half with a six-point lead of 36-29. The second half of the game was a different story. Although close at points, the Ramblers never gave up the lead in the remaining 20 minutes here at Genteel. The hero of the game was sophomore center Cameron Kretwig, who scored his first double-double of the season, leading the team with 18 points scored and 11 rebounds. Another star of the game was sophomore forward Ahiru Guak, tying with redshirt senior guard Marcus Towns for 15 points scored. The game ended with, as Sister Jean would say, a big W for Loyola and a final score of 75-62. to The Ramblers next face off against Grambling State here at Gentile on Friday, November 16th. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Amelia Ickes. Back to you guys at the desk. On November 9th, women's basketball competed against Youngstown State in their 2018-2019 season opener. The Penguins jumped out to an early lead and would remain there for the first two quarters of the game. Freshman Allison Day looked to spark the Ramblers just before halftime when she drained a three that pulled Loyola back to 41-27. Three-pointers on consecutive trips from sophomores Abby O'Connor and Ellie Rice trimmed the gap between the single back into the single digits. However, the Ramblers couldn't manage to gain and maintain the lead, and the Penguins sealed the game en route to Loyola's first loss of the young season with a final score of 74 to 63. On November 11th, women's basketball made their first appearance at Gentile Arena on Monday evening when it hosted Detroit Mercy. Led by a breakout showing from Day, the Ramblers used a big fourth quarter to pick up a 52-43 victory over visiting Detroit Mercy. Despite being down, Loyola forced the comeback in the fourth and final quarter after an old-fashioned three-point play from Day helped spark a quarter opening 11-0 run. The team is now 1-1 one one on the season and will next take on UIC on Saturday, November 17th at 3 p.m. The women's basketball team has been through quite the rebuild these past few seasons under head coach Kate Ochter. RSL reporter Amelia Ickes has more on the story. The Loyola women's basketball season is only three games in, but the players already have a lot to look forward to. I think like the, the new chemistry we have, we all have so much fun together on and off the court. Um, and so I think the fun that we have off the court together is really translating more on the court this year. And so um, we're getting more wins. I mean, we didn't have a win like this this early in the season last year. Um, so that's been super fun. And I'm just excited to see um, how we can do the rest of the year. The team is full of fresh faces this year, with the new players dominating on the court. One of these new players is freshman forward Allison Day, who totaled 14 points against Detroit Mercy, playing 28 minutes with 9 total rebounds. Sophomore guard Abby O'Connor tells us of how these new additions have affected the team. Um, I think it's changed our dynamics a lot with the new people that we have in. We have three new freshmen and a transfer, um, and the three freshmen have given us so much juice and energy, um, and they have played a big role. I mean, two of them have played really significant minutes for us. Allison just had a huge game for us against Detroit Mercy um, and brought us really big minutes, had some really big plays. Um, so the newcomers have really brought a lot, and our culture has changed so much with them. And, I think our chemistry has just gotten so much better this year with them. As a freshman, Abby was the only member of the Loyola roster to start in all 30 games. Her commitment to the team on and off the court has made her an example to the newcomers. 
Head coach Kate Actor speaks highly of her and the other experienced players who have served as role models. Um, on the floor, they're very, very much the example. So whatever we're doing, if it's a, an offensive or a defensive drill, they're the voice, they, they're the guiding um, presence in the paint. And then I think off the floor, they're just showing them how to be mature student athletes doing their job in the classroom, being good members of our social community, things like that. After the success of the men's basketball team last year, attendance for their games has skyrocketed. The women's team, however, has not seen the same increase in spirit. As the players and actor will tell you, though, there's a lot Loyola students are missing out on. Well, obviously we love to have some fans. Um, everyone's really jumped onto the men's success, and I know they love it. So coming out to a gym that with some screaming fans would obviously be super exciting. We're excited to have you here. We're getting better, so we're fun to watch, as promised. Um, I really think they're exciting. There's, we're getting better, and like you could be a part of the, the ship that we're turning. Because we're fundamental, and we really, really enjoy playing for one another. Um, our girls compete at a really high level. They fight for one another, and I think at the end of the day, you want to support the Ramblers that fight that hard. The Loyola women's team has their next home game against the Chicago State University Cougars on Monday, November 26th. Be sure to be there. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Amelia Ickes. Thanks, Amelia. In cross-country news, redshirt senior Lindsey Bruis won her second straight Missouri Valley Conference title on Saturday, October 27th in Peora, Illinois. Both the men's and women's team competed in the MVC Cross-Country Championship. The women's team placed second while the men's finished in eighth. Both teams were back at it again in Peora, Illinois on Friday, November 9th to compete in the NCAA Midwest Regional. The, team, the women's team raked up 414 points and the men's team earned 457 points. Both teams placed 16th in the competition. Lindsey Brewis claimed all region honors in the competition and has earned an at-large selection to the 2018 NCAA Cross Country Championship. The 2018 NCAA Cross Country Championship will take place on Saturday, November 17th in Madison, Wisconsin. On November 9th, Loyola Women's Volleyball competed against Illinois State University. RSL reporter Epiphany Jonikin has the recap. I'm Epiphany Jonikin reporting from Gentile Arena where the women's volleyball team lost to Illinois State 3-0. The first set was a game of cat and mouse. Illinois State was on the tails of Loyola throughout the first half. But the Redbirds quickly took the lead soon after Spiker stepped in to serve. This set the pace for the remainder of the sets, where the Ramblers trailed behind the Redbirds. The Ramblers ended the first set 25 to 18. They couldn't keep the pace and ended up losing 25 to 9. They ended up finishing the third set 25 to 17, and the game, whole game finished with Morgan Gresham and Quinn Speaker leading the Ramblers with eight points. But it wasn't enough to match the Redbirds, who had a stronger defensive game. Marissa Strachum had scored 15 points joined by Allie Lyons, 13. And they proved to serve, to serve it up in a way that the Rounders couldn't return. Loyola lost three to zero. I'm Epiphany Jonikin, reporting from Gentle Arena. Thanks, Epiphany. The following day, November 10th, the team was back in action against Bradley University. Senior outside hitter Morgan Gresham recorded a career best 19 kills and added 22 digs in the final home match of her collegiate career. But it wasn't enough as Loyola was defeated three sets to two. With 13 kills in the game, senior Gabby Majakowski moved into 10th place on Loyola's all-time kill list. She now has 1,089 career kills to her credit. The Ramblers have dropped their last three matches but are still fighting for a bid in the Missouri Valley Conference Championship. Loyola leads Drake by one game for the sixth and final spot with two contests remaining. The Ramblers will be back on the road next week starting with a trip to Southern Illinois on November 16th before heading to Missouri State on November 17th to close out the regular season. The Chicago Bears defeated the Detroit Lions this past Sunday, November 11th, but not without a few mistakes. RSL reporter Eric Moran takes a closer look at the Chicago Bears kicker in this week's Chicago Close-Up. On this week's Chicago Close-Up, I will be taking a closer look at Chicago Bears kicker Cody Parkey. 
Unfortunately for the Chicago Bears, the story of last week's 34-22 win over the Detroit Lions was not Mitchell Trubisky's 355-yard three-touchdown day or even Khalil Mack's dominant return. It was the four misses from veteran kicker Cody Parkey. It is no secret that the Bears have struggled at the kicking position ever since re releasing the franchise scoring leader and longtime Bear Robbie Gold two years ago. The Bears have cycled through three different kickers since then before finally settling on a new kicker in the offseason who general manager Ryan Pace believes would be the answer to the Bears kicking problems. He believed in Parkey so much he offered him a four-year $15 million contract. It's safe to say that Parkey has not lived up to the expectations. Coming into Detroit, Parkey was 13 for 16 with one of his misses being a would-be game winner against the Miami Dolphins. Parkey didn't help his case in last week's game against Detroit when he went 2 for 4 for extra points and 0 for 2 in field goal attempts, one from 41 yards and the other from 34. To make it even worse for Parkey, all four of his misses hit the uprights all being just inches away from a successful attempt. Fortunately for the Bears, the four misses did not hurt them because they were playing a beat-up opponent in the Detroit Lions. But this begs the question, what are the Bears going to do when they play stronger opponents and have closer games? The Bears are going to need to rely on Parkey to make clutch kicks, especially if they want any chance at making the playoffs and from there progressing in the playoffs. This concern caused many Bears fans and Bears media members calling for Parkey to be cut. Head coach Matt Nagy noted it would be a possibility that Parkey would start practicing during the week at Soldier Field during the tough weather conditions and on, on the notorious turf. On Wednesday, November 14th, one such practice was held. As for Cody Parkey, it doesn't look like he is going anywhere anytime soon, and the Bears are putting all their faith in him as we approach the final stretch of the regular season. That's it for this week's Chicago Close-Up. I'm Eric Moran, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Eric. Hopefully Parkey can have a better run this Sunday night against the Vikings. In other news, go Bills. For our full episodes and chance to get on, on the conversation, follow and like our social media handles for an up-to-date look at all things Rambler sports. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Ioana Kekados. And I'm Michael Faso. Check back next week for another episode of the Rambler Sports Locker. And as always, don't forget to turn out the lights.